We're sitting down with uh, transcaster Gerald Salenti to discuss the year ahead, 2014, uh, what lays ahead socially, economically, politically. Uh, Gerald, thank you very much for, for having us today. Well, you are saying in your forecast that 2014 is going to be a year of extremes. Uh, from what I've read, uh, kind of tough hardships walking hand in hand with more um, inner enlightenment of sorts. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what do you mean? How is this going to uh, represent itself in real life? Well, look at the extremes going on right now. Who would have thought what was going on in Thailand would be going on and continue to go on as hundreds of thousands of people are out in the streets? Go over to the Ukraine. Go over to Romania. Take a look what's going on over in Syria and in Libya. Look at the unrest going on throughout Italy with the pitchfork movements. In Spain, around the world, I've never seen so much volatility at one time in so many different ways. Look at Mexico at the outrage of them nationalizing their oil fields and the hundreds of thousands of people taking to the streets. And then you start looking and you pile on the economic news. It's not getting any better anywhere. The only thing it's gotten better for is that 1%. I mean, I'm not making it up. The numbers show it. Here in the United States, you have 400 people that own 10 trillion dollars worth of assets? Why, that's bigger than the GDP of Italy, bigger than the GDP of Canada or Mexico. So you're seeing these extremes, and there's no answer on how are they going to deal with it. Is there anything positive we should expect in 2014? I mean, are any of these aspects that people have been worried about globally for so long that you talk about, are any of them likely to improve as soon as this, this year? Yes, because what we're seeing is I'm going through this whole list of what's going on. There's a new word that keeps floating up. And of course, a lot of the people in the media make it a negative and it's how you look at it. And it's called populist movements. So when you say populist movement, it's, well, they're anti-immigration or they're neo-fascist, or they're neo-Nazi, or they're... No. It's people wanting their countries back. I mean, after all, I mean, this is America. We had a revolution in this country. It went from a country that was under the crown to the country that became the beacon of freedom. And of course, now it's the beacon of the NSA. You have no freedom. But it's the enlightenment of that. To say, no, we had enough. What about the United States? You don't have the outrage because the people are being fed just enough, quieted down just enough to keep them in, in check. You get out of line, the pe police are going to break your head open. So you don't have the freedom in America going on now for the people really to get out there and protest. You saw what happened with the Occupy movement. You get out of line, you're, you're, they'll break open your head. So the United States is behind the curve here. It has to happen a different way. Tons of people are talking about, including yourself, uh, in terms of what to expect in the nearest future is another huge wave of an economic mess. Exactly. When the economic so calamity happens. What, where is this coming from this time, and how can people just prepare themselves for it? I mean, what do we do? Run? Escape, no, I, <laughs> the, I would have thought it would have happened before. And the reason I was wrong, I had no idea the Federal Reserve was dumping out $17 trillion worth of behind-the-scenes money that we only found about one time because of Ron Paul when the Fed had a report upon it. All right, so now we're into the tapering process. And we have to remember that all things are connected. This is a global age. So let's go look first at what's going on in China. All of a sudden, interest rates are going up in China. The debt to GDP is over 200% now, from 130% a couple of years ago. They have a real crisis. The Chinese have been doing exactly like the Americans and the Europeans have been doing, and they're dumping cheap money into the system. Now the Chinese, like the Americans with the starting the tapering, they're pulling back. They can't keep pumping money into the system. So... What's the result? Already, go back. All of a sudden, hey, wait a minute, those, uh, those treasuries, 10-year treasuries, they're almost at 3%. 
be going up. As interest rates go up, the fake economy goes down. You know, you look like the kind of person you could use a new automobile. Oh, you don't have any credit? Don't worry about it. Call this number. I have a deal for you. We're going to give it to you for 0%. That's right. Step right up. No money down. 0%. You don't have to worry about anything. So what they're doing is they've created another bubble. Yes, but shouldn't people be not surprised? Because this is exactly what happened in 2008. So do you think people are falling into the same exact trap again? Do I think they're falling into it? Look at automobile debt. It's almost at a trillion dollars. Of course they're falling into it again. It's the same scam. So this other wave, new wave of, the, of whatever crash we should expect, it's, it can't be avoided at this point? It cannot be. They may come up with another scheme undreamed of. What can someone listening to you do about this? Just a common American or anybody in the world really affected by this? Uh... Well, you know, I still believe in gold. You know, people talk about bitcoins. Why would I want to buy bitcoins? So to me, it's going to go back at some point. It's going to go back to hard assets. So what you're looking at around the world are you're looking at movements for people that want to take their governments back. Look what happened in the United States with this NSA thing. And you've been with the Trends Journal. You've been writing about this for years. The only thing different is that Snowden put the proof down to what we've been writing about for the last six years. Right. Let's talk about that. You, you mentioned people taking governments back. Will people ever be able to take their privacy back or that's it in this day and age we just accept it, move on, and this is something that we're just going to have to Of course with. it could come back. Who are these people to say that they should be taking it away from us? Everything that the Republicans and the Democrats are doing in the United States is diametrically opposed to everything that this country was founded upon. Who are these people that are telling us how our Constitution should be interpreted? But we how does one fix that? I mean, with such a scope and such unprecedented information coming out that all of this is going on, how do people move forward? It's very simple. Everybody is upset, but w w and? It's very simple. You're seeing it in country after country. To me, the model that exists, that everyone, all they have to look at to see if you want to see something work, you look at the fall of the Berlin Wall. The people didn't leave. They went out and they never left. I have a slogan, by the way. Stay home, don't vote. Why would I want to vote for one of the corrupt parties for we're getting all excited about the upcoming elections. Will it be Hillary Clinton or will it be Christie? Will it be Biden? Will it be Ryan? Will it be Larry Moa Curley? Will it be Abbott or Costello? What self-respecting person could look up to these people? And there are a lot of people that are ready for a change to happen. And I believe it's starting to happen. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And there are a lot of young people out there holding university degrees that they owe seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars for, and they can't get jobs. And they're not stupid. They're watching it unfold in front of them, and they're angry. And they have the vitality. And they're also the people like myself that've been around. And we know the score was making this stuff up. Well, what happens to those people? What happens to the college, college graduates? What happens to the working Americans? You say 2014, it's not going to be any better. They are continuing to be forgotten, left to themselves. I mean, so it's how is It's this... is what I call it. Look at the jobs. Again, I'm not making it up. According to the data, over 90% of the jobs created in the United States in 2013 were part-time jobs. It's right. more of the same, but worse. Everything we've, we've been seeing coming out of the United States, do you think, um, what's happening to its position in the world? Where is it headed? I believe that every nation's problems can be solved if every nation minds its own business and stays home. Again, going back to the foundation upon which this nation was founded upon. Every one of the founding fathers was totally opposed to him being involved in foreign entanglements. Who are these people 
that put it in their head that they're going to start fixing the world and becoming involved in everybody else's business. I got one for you. Could you fix Detroit? No, if you do that, then move over to the South Bronx. Hey, Camden is beautiful. Let's have a picnic over there. A lovely day in Trenton, and East St. Louis is just glorious, and Oakland at night is just a wonder to be out in. Who made this up? We have all the resources that we need in this country to be the great country that we used to be. Gerald, uh, in your uh, forecast for the next year, uh, you also talk about the wake-up call for politicians. So who is going to be that person or that entity or that voice that brings about the change? Oh, this is really radical and dramatic. Direct democracy, like they have over in Switzerland. You want to go to war? Let the people vote. You want your money going to foreign countries? Let the people vote. Do you want to bail out banks or financial institutions? Let the people vote. It's direct democracy. And then these people say the first reaction, why, we'd have mob rule. Yeah. yeah. What do you think you got now? You want to talk about a mob? We have a gang of 535 senators and congressmen telling 315 million people how to tie their shoes. With direct democracy, we're... Anything's better than the corrupt system that you have now.